All right, this is going to be a very long class uh, we're doing. Um, we may have a popularity on the crash course, so I think we'll continue to do that. Uh, I'm going to go through the, the fundamental, you know, the head drawing, the drawing perspective, landscape composition, value color. I really think this is uh, going to be good for people who can't, or you can't afford new masters, which I think I'm really, really proud to be part of new masters. Um, can't make it to my school, you know, you're in another part of the world. Um, you know, you can zoom into our school. Um, you know, get our books, you know, call Corey. But um, let's move on with the crash course. So this is going to be um, a uh, head drawing. I'm going to do a head drawing here. I'm going to surround it with all the fundamentals. You see, I have all kinds of different techniques. And uh, for me, if I like to draw the music, I'm going to use these. So I'll be able to talk to you while I'm listening to music, but i got to pay all this to music. So I'm going to do that. And then if you have questions, just go ahead and uh, email Corey at Portfolio Art School. Okay? So let's figure out what I want to listen to. And we're going to get to the alarm. A lot of a lot of information. So we'll continue. So this is the uh, I think we're gonna paint this one. Uh, we'll draw it. And she's on the internet, you know, she's one of the Instagram people. And then uh of inspirational stuff, you know, stuff to look at. Like I really like this drawing, you know. And I really like that one. And then she I just painted her with oil the other day. It would be fun to draw her again. But I think this would be good too, it's amazing. So um, the cool part about it is I'm not trying to do a portrait, so um, I'll be adjusting and, you know, definitely not copying the model. Um, one thing I like is to, uh, to use these brushes. It's really fun. So you can use brushes and paint the information. This is going to be concrete, and I'll do the drawings around it with a uh, pen. And find some music and uh, do it as well. I can figure out what I want to do. Hmm. Should have figured this out before. You can I listen to Marillion when I go deep. So let's do that. And uh, do it. I can uh, listen to the music and hear you at the same time. You're in my studio. So, as soon as you put down, even start to put down any kind of land, it should represent your knowledge of anatomy, rhythm chart, everything is inside the is inside your um, scribble. There's a rhythm chart. It's boom, boom. And the rhythm chart you can find in my books. The best one, I think, the one I like the most is the advanced uh, it book. It's got tons of stuff in there. So much content out there now. Everybody's teaching. So, there's so much opportunity to learn. And the people that are teaching, I mean, the gods, you know, you know, people that have you know, worked in the studios and stuff, they're all teaching now. When we first started, I think we were the only ones doing it. 
So you guys have so much uh, opportunity. You should not have an excuse to not be able to get the information. Back in our day, you know, somebody would grab a scene and Xerox it, and we'd all get a copy of it and study it, or we'd, you know, work from Super 8, you know, on the editors and stuff. You know, and try to, you know, there was a couple books that were out, and they didn't even have Frank and Ollie's book out yet, you know. So, and then I had mentors. And, uh, you know, Glenn Filthu, Eddie Raber, Leonard Robinson, my huge best friend and the greatest, greatest friend and mentor and friend. And you know, I'd be nothing today without Leonard. So, he's teaching. Study with Leonard. Study with Zilfu. Study with Perkins. Study with them all. So, you get this nice, oof. Alright, so that's our lay-in. Now let's get into what we're actually doing. So let's grab this. So what is the rhythm chart? You know, you kind of think the rhythm chart is uh, Riley. And that's the funny part, you know. Rhythm Riley. Rhythm Riley. Well, not always. You know, Albert Einstein thinks, sure. You know, he invented, he had his rhythm chart. And, uh, you know, everybody has their own rhythm chart. So it's not like you have to, you know, follow this one. You don't have to do Riley. I like Riley. So let's start over here with the rhythm chart. Yeah, we're good. So here's the rhythm chart. Basically, start with the shape of the face. You know, so look at the person. Maybe they got a, they have kind of a, you know, an egg-shaped face, or they have a, you know, square face or round face. That's the way to start. All people are only maybe 20% different from anybody else. So, you know, and because I work in forensics, I know it's the zygomatic process and uh, the nasal aperture, forehead, maybe a little tooth somewhere. That's it. So. For people who want to be big, it's, what are you doing? I mean, what are you bigoting on? You know, a little difference and a, a little, a couple little changes in the skull or tertiary skin. It's so stupid. Um, so we got that. That's the first. And I'm going to be filling this up. I'm going to go, the next step is the center line. So you want to know that everything has a center line. When I was pregnant with my daughter, I had a center line on my stomach, and still, it still never went away. I never lost the weight or the center line. You have a center line, and that's how you know how things turn. Um, eyes are halfway, and that's just to get started. So eyes are halfway, and then the nose is halfway between, and then the mouth. So we go halfway, halfway, halfway. Okay. The um, you have one eye in between. You have five eyes across. The nostrils line up with your cereal. Okay. The mouth lines up with the center of the eye. That works. The tear duct lines up with the nostril, which lines up with the fang. So I do skull reconstruction. So if you give me a skull, I could draw the person. And one of the things I love the most, I just look and see where the, uh, the fang is, and I go straight up and I know the nostril. Um, ethnicities, you have the nasal aperture. So, coccozoid, which are the white guy across the room, he's got five millimeters, not so five millimeters off the nasal aperture. That's the whole. And then negroid is ten millimeters. That's the other friend across the room. And then the, uh, mongoloid is somewhere in between, and that's the other friend across the room, or all your buddies. Um, right here would be the turning, and then that's your jaw. And the ear lines up with the, uh, goes from your eyebrow to bottom of the nose. All right, so you got that. That's your basic proportions, okay? And then the jaw stops right here at the mouth. The rhythm chart, though, 
we're going to go here. Can you guys all see this? Yeah, this is working. This is cool. So it's only 9 o'clock. It's like 9.30 LA time. So I'm going to work really late tonight and get this done. But I got a lot of projects going right now. I'll be working, you know, I work a 14 day week. And, uh, I love it. So, like, I'll work an eight hour day and I'll take a nap and I'll do another, like, six, seven hours or so. And I'll do that. So, it's, you know, like, another 14 day week. And up here, you know, retired from teaching in the universities, which is fine. It was a good run. I was teaching 30 years, which is more than I had anticipated, so then I went to college. But I love the, and I love the kids. I wish them all the best. Okay, so here's our proportions. And, uh, but I do have my own school. And I think the cool part of my school is, um, we're just absolutely insane. And what, what you can't get away with in the college classroom now, well, you walk in the door, it's all part of you know what you're dead. We have way too much fun. We have a great fun. The kids are just adorable. Okay, so the first rhythm here. Um, yeah, you can pose. Let's see. Oh, maybe I'll just do a couple. So here's the, this is your forehead. And it goes from the pit of the, it goes from your hairline to where your, your skull turns. Alright, that's your forehead. The key thing is it goes into, where your eyes, where it meets your nose, right there. So that will give you that triangle shape right there, which is really cool. So that, that really gets rid of some mystery right away. The next rhythm is going to be right here, and that's what's going to connect the nose to the face. And that sounds like a real mystery. I would always smear it when I was a kid and try to figure it out. And then when I, you know, started studying with the masters, you know, it was great. And Riley, I like Riley. And I like Fred Fixler a lot. I studied with Fred Fixler for over six years straight. Every, probably, I don't know, five days a week. So, definitely Riley is in my soul, you know. And then Vilto, of course, is my life. So we got that rhythm here, and that'll take us to the brow. But really all you got is one, two, Three, and that's your mouth there. See, you got that, and that's where the mouth connects to the face. And then you got this, which is you know for your, you know your chin. See, and then you draw a line from here past the mouth over the ear. See, and now it's the side plane. So that works out really well. And then you have this phantom rhythm that comes around like this. And this is your, your old age rhythm. And it goes like that, because that will bring you down. You know, it, when gravity hits, you know, it goes down. That's kind of cool. Alright, and these are just the rhythms. We're going to do the planes in a little while. Um, but if you look for expressions, there's your rhythms, you see. So it's really simple. You know, there's your, you know, forehead. That's your rhythm here to here. You can see it. And then this one's coming over. You can see that. Right? And then here. And then there, and you can see if you just pull that, this rhythm down, you get the frown. And there's the, there's the, this one right here for the chin. It's really just one, two, three and a half. Real simple. Okay? And then you're, you're set. Okay? So now let's, uh, let's try to keep drawing here. I don't want to get a lot of, uh, a lot of schmutz down here so I can pick it out later with the new readers here. And I don't, when I draw now, it's just music. So, let's take a look at that and I'm going to change the music here. Let's see. My whole life is music. It's what I do. I love it. I'm going to go with something that I like here. Yeah. This 
let's take a look at the, uh, the drawing. Here we go. There's some meatloaf. So this little box right here, this thing called the phone, it's kind of like an image. So really, if you have this, you got the world. Okay. And I've got close to 2,000 books. And massive, massive amounts of scenes and layouts and storybooks. But really, I just put it on my phone. So if I'm working on a case and I need to look up something, then I can take a 40 pound book off my shelf. Or I can just go to my phone. But I know what I'm looking for, and I think that's probably the most important. So, like, I'll read. Like, I study all the time. I know what I'm looking for, and I think that's probably the difference. So, like, I'll read the book, and then I'll come back later and study. You know, look up the, that part. So, studying is the key. Um, if my teachers from high school and junior high school knew how much I studied, they would be like dying. I was not the academic as a kid, and now I'm a complete, total academic. So it's really funny how things happen. My parents too would probably be like dying if they knew. And, uh, so I mean, it's really funny. You never know. Alright, so what I'm putting in this land, I'm still putting in the rhythms. You got that? Alright, that's the start. I took this beautiful brush and destroyed it. I wonder what it's worth. A beautiful art color. Alright, now I'm going to come in with this. We get to work. Alright, here's the eyes. And now here's where you have to make your decision. Um, if you're an animator, you have to, you gotta draw it three, around. You gotta draw it like three, six, you know, like, like it's made out of glass. Cause you're turning it, right? So I'm putting it in the rhythms, but I had a situation, I was teaching a class, and it was a big shot, you know, with that. And one of the students asked a question, he said, do you always have to draw through to go in a long pose? And this person said, well, I'll speak for myself and the faculty. If you're doing a long pose, you don't have to. That changed my life, because I thought, wow, someone's actually teaching that. Um, if you're not drawing through, you're not drawing. Okay, so cross contours of your life. But if you're painting, and you just want to do a painting, I guess you can get away with it, but if you get kind of a mushy drawing, you know, if you get, it could be a mushy painting if you're not careful. So, that could be a problem, but, to tell a group of students that they don't have to draw through, that's, it scared me. You know, I was like, wow, I'm glad I wasn't teaching there no more. Anyways, um, but, and I think it's up to the student to figure it out and research it. There's so much information out there. So, you know, if you study from Vilpu, you know, you'll see that you're constantly drawing through it around and any of the animals. So, I guess it's your job to figure out what is fake news. Okay, um, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here, boom, boom, boom. You start thinking design, you know, maybe you start thinking of the rhythms here. So you have your, your cool bits in a way. Um, so everything you're going to draw will have the connection of cool, how say cool, how say bitchin', and the wave. So here I'm using the wave, okay? And then for the design, you know, if I've got this wave going this way, I can put it straight there. That'll give me design. And come this 
way. We have a wave here, and then a straight, and a straight, and then a wave. Okay, so I got that happening there. So maybe I'll put a straight there and connect it here with the curve. You're thinking design right from the start. Okay, like this, I got this nice long. Okay, so now the next step is going to be plane. Okay, and this is where you're sculpting. Everybody see the same? Yeah. So we're going, you know, proportions, rhythm, and now we're going to go plane. So you're going to constantly, always doing the same thing and progressing forward. Half, half, half. Rhythm chart. Okay. So now we're going to go in there and put in the plane. So what is a plane? Plane is basically if we have like a box. You want to keep it simple. You know, don't overthink things. So if this is my boss, right? So what I can do is I sculpt it. You see, so this is the top plane, that's the side, that's the side, right? If I go like this, see that's a sub plane. So now I'm gonna walk along like this and go like that. And then go like that. See? So now what you're going to find is this is your lights up here. Okay. Cool. That looks good. And then, um, then this is more of a half tone here. See? And then a shadow here. So it's like super logical. Right? So light, and then it turns. So that's more of like a half tone, because light's still getting on it from the oblique angle. And then here's the, uh, shadow. And you get your, and you get your cast shadow here. Okay? And you get reflected light coming in there. So it's really easy. Okay? Um, so let's do the plane. So we go like this. So like here's the side plane. Right? So then chart there. Okay. And then there's the center plane there. Okay. And there's the side plane. And then come down. And there's that nose shape, remember? Inside of the nose, right there. That's the rhythm chart. And the top, inside. You just pretend like your your pen is an ant crawling on paper, crawling over the form. And that's cross contour. No cross contour, no drawing. Okay. And then we got this. So that's another plane there. And then it goes like that. And then like this. So like that. And the side plane there. So the planes are going to change, you know, with the shape. So if you notice, you know, when you're putting all this pressure, you know, like the, the different pressure on the muscles, it's going to change your planes. So the rhythm chart will be the same because that's based on anatomy. But the planes will change based on how things are pushed. Like there's a box shape there, the plane there, plane, plane, plane. Okay? This plane, there's a lip, you got that plane. You have to 
of memorize things. You just take a magazine, you draw the planes right over the magazine, you'll learn it in a week or two. If you don't, do that, it'll take longer. If you want, you just take a marker. Yeah, so a marker here. Yeah. I tons of markers, so I'm not thinking. And a lot of markers. Shadow side here. Put him in the plane, just kind of sculpting. Just think of it as sculpting. Sculpting, drawing, painting, sculpting. Alright, you got that? Let's get involved with the drawing now. So if you're painting, you're sculpting. Okay. I'm always involved with the skull, I take it all over the skull. Um, I'll get back to the See, this is a female skull right here. So, you know, it's got a smaller cranium, it's a rounder mandible, alright? So that's a female. So when I look at this, I'm seeing this. Okay? You see that? So that's where I go. You know? But I also learned that from being in Korea. So. We want to get these fundamentals down because you don't know where your career is going to take you. I think I never thought I would want to try this, but I love it. Edges. Let's look at that real quick. Cross contour. 
of solid. So we're going to have the light side. We'll call that the light side. And then this is the shadow here. So we have light side, shadow side. See? Now this is blocking the uh, the eye. So we'll put in what's called the core shadow and the cast shadow. So cast shadows have hard edges. See that? Okay. Now the light's going to hit this and bounce back in. Okay. So this is going to be the only pure shadow that's left. And that's called the core. It's like the core of an apple. You know, it's the only pure, it's like still pure apple. You're eating this way and you're eating that way. So the light's eating in this way, and the reflected light's eating in this way, and this is the leftover core of an apple. So if we have an apple here, you're eating into it. And they call this area here the core. Yeah. So the light's eating this way and reflected light's eating that way. Same thing, the light's eating this way, reflected light's eating this way, and this is what's left as far as pure shadow is. It has soft edges. Okay? So real soft edges. Okay? And then this area here is half tone. And this is reflected light. And in the background, if you lose an edge, so if this matches the background, that's a lost edge. You want to lose edges. So it brings the eye in. It's really cool. So it comes in. See, it come out. See? Okay, and then you'll have your highlight here. There you go. Highlight, half tone, core, reflected light cat. Okay. I just think of like a song. Highlight, half tone, core, reflected light cat. And I'm just going to be like, so baby, baby, highlight and core. I mean, highlight and half tone, and half tone and core, and reflect. Is like a sing a song. Almost in the meatloaf. That's it. That's what you're thinking about. And you draw the face. And you don't want the half tone to be as light as, as your half tone. You don't want your reflected light to be as light as your half tone. Okay? No, destroy your form. This should be a little darker than that. what I'm doing here. You notice. I'm putting in the core shadow. So it's coming this way. So it's a core, but it's it's really kind of you know, it's a sharp edge. So it's not a box shape. It's kind of a box shape. But still a little bit of a core there. You can see it. I have no excuses to learn. My teacher, Eddie Reber, would never allow me to give excuses. He would yell at me. He yelled at me anyway. So, my name is Guy Damage from me. It's great. Now I'm going to put in um, the shadow here. So if you look, this is a really good thing. So if you look, you got this shadow here. 
If you're painting, you're, you're thinking mostly about shapes. I really like this guy right here. And uh, I'm kind of looking at the book for reference. I keep my mood. It's not like that. That's really pretty. So I'll take that and put it over here in front of me. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at like a bunch of different photos on my phone, looking at that for inspiration. So it's not just one thing, everybody. You know, don't think that it's like, it's not so pure. You know, like you're, you're constantly looking at tons of different reference. Alright, so that's that. I'm sculpting. The light coming this way, there's a plane. When you draw an eye, the eye is a shape like this, it's round. You go like that, then go short, long, long, short, so you have that angle like that, that's the eye. And then I, I kind of draw square pupils. Okay, and then there's the eyelids, and then there's the eyebrow. The eyebrow could be where the rhythm changes. Okay. okay. That's my eyeball. If you have what we call a low cactus, you get the sleepy eyes. That means that the muscles are attaching to a little, bu little bump inside the inside the eye right there. It's a cactus. So if it's a low cactus, you get sleepy eyes. If it's in the middle, you get kind of you know, usual eyes. And if it's a high cactus, then you have smiling eyes. You see that? Kind of, I guess they look kind of low. Phantom 
some reason, but for her, she's so young and pretty. Doesn't matter. The eye, you're looking at the eye from three quarters here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's your eye. You're going to have a lens on there. So you're going to put the pupil to the inside of that crosshair, and then the highlight will be here. You know, the light that side of the eye. Mm -hmm. Scared look on her eyes, so I'm very changing that. And attach it to the eye, uh, to the top of the lid. It's kind of grow it out of the upper lid. And we do this mascara in there. She doesn't have much in the way of eyewear. So. She has a strong label, uh, nasal label fold right there. I think that's why. That's a plan to go back. The nose is just a box. It goes over. So, so you have your, um, you have a hole in the face, right? Right there. So the nose covers that. It's just a covering so you don't get flies in it and stuff. So you have a cartilage here and a cartilage there. And this is called the septum. And then you have your nostrils right there. There you go. Okay? So if you're going to turn it, you want to find that this right there, the navel bone with the bump, you're going to go like that. Okay. If you're turning the head, if you're animators, put the line on the direction it's turning. Okay. There you go. That's the nose. Poor shadow. That's shadow. So this is going to cast a shadow off the nose and down to the lip area here. Now the lips look like this. So you have your teeth, so the lips go over that. It's like when you're a kid, you put an orange in your mouth, they look small. All right, so you got that. And then what you're going to do is the lips are designed so you don't get bugs in your mouth. You go like that. So you're going to have triangle shapes here, and this is going to overlap the lower lip. Okay, so that over, and then this overlaps, the lower lip overlaps the upper lip. So it's kind of like a nice little seal, keep the bugs out. Here's your design. Okay, and you're drawing it, draw a center line. And then go like that and do up and down and then come in a little bit. This is all in my book. Go like that. And go like that. Okay. And just change it. If you want to turn.
kind of go like that, put the line there. Then you go like that. Cut off the bottom, go like that. And you can just keep turning. When you get to the profile, you just like that. Make these angles. Okay. Make your plane. And the mouth should go to the center of eye, but it doesn't always. If you notice, her mouth has got a small mouth that actually lines up with the tear ducts. So you're constantly dropping these plumb lines for measurement. Enough. Our mouth is the wrong spot. We're going to go down like that. See that? I need that over. Don't come losing the drawing. You're always checking. It's like if you're driving, you know, you check your view mirror all the time. You're always checking your proportion. Always, always, always. Down here, drop the center line. And then here's some plane under the mouth. Walk on down. We'll loosen the edges here. Make your brush strokes uneven. Notice I'm putting the brush strokes in uneven. So you can't use that. Yeah.
You're going to put in the lines for the hair. I'm going to put them in a few different places. Don't put too much. Let the audience work for it. Let them have some fun. I'm only thinking cool bitchin' and wave when I put the first notes down, okay? I really like what New Master's doing. I've been doing that stuff where I'm just answering questions. And it's been really fun. You know, you can get to directly answer the question. So I've been doing that. And then of course at my school, it's a whole different world. My school is a mentoring school. So everybody's taught their own personal way. And uh you know, really, you know, it's a, just a place where people love, you know, it's just a, it's a nice place. The kids are great. Everybody gets along. I like it. So, and it's really silly. We have so much fun. So, if you get to the school, you have a good time. And then, we got people zooming in from all over the world. We got people from Canada, uh, <coughs> excuse me, from India, all over the country. Really fun. We talking. People on Zoom are talking to people in the room. It's really cool.
reflected life here. Brush strokes follow the rhythm chart in the plane. Normally, there's just one scan. Oh, you needed a rest of first, I got some of the whites. And then we'll come back to the white. So this is like a, an escalator. Like this is one level of the mall, and that's the second level. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to take an escalator down to the cheek. I'm not doing a portrait right now. Portraits are a whole different story. Portraits, you're constantly being careful. And portraits are pain in the butt. I've got portraits hanging in really nice places. So I've done some really nice portraits. But, you know, you're, you've got to keep on model. You know, it's got to look like the person. It has to look like what the person thinks they look like. like I think I look like the combination of Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. But that's just me. When I look in the mirror, I go, I took a client out to lunch and I said, I was going to meet her at the restaurant, right? And she goes, well, what do you look like? I said, well, I'm kind of a combination between Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. And this was back when, you know, they were in their prime, you know, like really, you know, I don't know, they were doing all their sexy movies and stuff. 
And uh, during the entire lunch, she was staring at me. I couldn't figure out why she was staring at me. And then I remembered it was really funny. In fact, thinking, where is any of that? You know, so to speak. When you're doing a portrait, not only are you drawing the person, you have to draw what they think they look like. I don't have to ask them a lot of questions and stuff. I did a character design on the client that whatever you do, don't make the character look like uh, Robert Redford. He kept saying that. So what I finally did is I just drew the character look like Robert Redford. He bought it on the first pass. So a lot of psychology goes into being an artist. So remember, this is the lightest part. That's the, you know, it's turning, it gets darker. So as we get over here, this light area here, it's not going to be as light as this. So the darks in your light are the lights in your dark. This will be real blurry on this side, and this side will be real sharp. We need atmospheric perspective, even if we're doing just a phase. That's a hard edge, it's a cast shadow, and it comes down here to a softer edge, and it's a core shadow. Light's gonna hit this, 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 and this. So just pretend this is the light and just hit the part, hit the plane.
even the highlights will get you know darker as I go around. Don't put in too many lines in the hair, just a few of the audience in here. Now we have these half tones under the eyes. The brush strokes fall on the rhythm.
you can overwork it. Okay. So what do we got? We got this. Okay, we'll do some more. 